Welcome guys, this is a Black Flicks and Chill Recap. In today's video, we present to you the tripping and inspiring historical true life event of Bernard Garrett and Joe Morris, two of the first revolutionary black bankers to collaborate on a daring scheme to empower the African American community, titled The Banker. Actively starred by Anthony Mackie, the lead character, Samuel L. Jackson, man of wisdom and business partner to Bernard, Nia Long, a vicious woman, Bernard's wife, and Nicholas Holt, the innocent white man, all of which delivered outstanding performances in their respective roles. If you are wondering how they pulled off such a daring scheme, well, you might be amazed. To get a true hang of the movie, Sit back and relax because you are about to watch an all-time favorite movie recap that inspires wealth. At the beginning of the movie, we see an ambitious black boy named Bernard Garrett, a true hustler who settled for his shoe shining at the front of a bank where he gets to listen to the financial discussions of the white people. Bernard's lifelong dream was to become a banker, which gave him a knack for getting rich. However, he believed that black people were not given enough opportunities to embark in business and make wealth like the white people. Every day, while shoe shining, he learns something new from white people about the secrecy of business and jots it down in his little journal. One day, curiosity got the best of him, and he was caught spying on the white people to learn more about their financial financial secrets, which led to a serious conversation with his father. His father gave him some advice and made him realize why his dreams are impossible in Texas. But Bernard was not convinced because he saw life in a different perspective. Fifteen years later, the little boy had grown and moved to Los Angeles with his family. He already had a son, a car, and was married to Eunice, a zealous woman who was determined to help her man realize his potential. After a few days in Los Angeles, he discovers that the racial discrimination was not as serious as in Texas, where he came from. He sees potential in the city and decides to start his business there, looking to get his hands on a real estate business. Due to migration, Bernard and his family had to stay in a little shed. Not happy about the situation, he promised his wife and son that he would get them out of the shed in no time. Bernard spends each passing day searching for properties that need to be sold in the city and observes that the white neighborhoods are empty while the black neighborhood is overcrowded. Watch out for how far a business mind can go. Like magic, he discovered that the black people have good financial strength to purchase leased properties, but no real estate market to meet their needs. What a great opportunity, he thought to himself. Later that day, during a walk with his wife, his business mind was triggered to life when he noticed a white-owned apartment with empty rooms directly adjacent to the black neighborhood. He saw the house as the best idea for his real estate business. He went ahead to meet with the owner of the house, Mr. Barker, and advised him to sell the house to him for a total of $35,000 on the grounds that his empty apartment could become full in a twinkle of an eye. As expected, Barker was captured by the idea but didn't fall for it. While leaving his office, his attention was drawn to a calendar with bank loan information. He went directly to the bank to meet with the bank manager, Mr. Reed, as his name was included in the information as the manager. On getting to the bank, he is denied access by the secretary to meet with the bank manager and decides to wait for him until after his closing hours. He finally meets with Mr. Reed and persuades him to approve a loan that will benefit his VIP customer, Mr. Barker, and his business idea, which Mr. Reed flatly declines. Even at the verge of giving up after several objections, there is always something called hope. That very night, he got a call from Mr. Barker, the house owner, asking him if he tried to get a loan in his name. Truthful Bernard had no choice but to say yes because it was true. After a few discussions, Mr. Barker says he loves his confidence and appreciates his entrepreneurial gusto, which made him stand as his loan guarantor and unlock the key to his real estate speculations. Bernard was able to get his first loan ever and bought the property with the help of Mr. Barker. Since the property was not in its best condition, Bernard decided to do some home improvements with his cousin so he could lease the house to the black people at a better rate. A white old lady named Miss Cooper walked into the house and was surprised to see a black man at the front of the door. She sharply asked, Who are you? Bernard respectfully replied, I am renovating the apartment and don't you worry about my building. I will take care of it. After hearing this, she says, Don't you dare sass me. And if you are thinking of jacking up other people's rent, don't ever jack up mine. Bernard asked her not to worry about it because Mr. Barker, her former landlord, informed him about her before selling the building. Surprised to see that a black man owned a white building in a white neighborhood, she walked away quietly. Later, Bernard's cousin's friend comes to help with his house renovation, which sparks up a business conversation and past experiences between them. After their conversation, the white cops come to confront him on the grounds that an old lady had reported that he was impersonating and trying to act like the owner of the building. Bernard, on the other hand, has prepared his property papers, knowing that a day like this would come. He handed them the papers as proof that he's now the true owner of the building which the cops soon realized and left. Later that night, Bernard walks into the new apartment and meets with Miss Cooper, who tells him that he can't be around the building after 
after 6 p.m. Bernard still calmly replies, I am not a construction worker now. I am moving in as the owner. The old lady is shocked. This indicates to never look down on anybody. As predicted by the real estate agent, the black market is huge and he leases out the vacant apartments to the black people. Bernard meets with Mr. Barker, tells him that all the apartments have been leased and gives him the remaining balance for the house. Mr. Barker, quite impressed with the real estate agent, proposes a partnership idea, saying, let's be partners. You do the calling and the follow-ups, but when we need a face to sign the deal, it will be me. Bernard accepts the contract and gives him a partnership handshake. Another fantastic turnaround for Bernard and his partner as their real estate business booms. Soon after, Bernard moves into a mansion with his family after making a lot of money. A few days later, the story takes a sad dimension when Mr. Barker, Bernard's partner, is found dead on his bed by the wife. It's good to know that life will always challenge us, but how we take on the challenges determines how far we go. Later, Mr. Barker's wife shows up with her lawyer, severely discriminating against him as a black man and offering to buy Bernard's share at a very low price. She, however, threatens to sue him in court if he refuses her offer. Bernard, not wanting to be cheated after all his hard work, decides to go to court to litigate against the woman. To win the case, he needs to find a witness who knows about the true intentions of the late Mr. Barker. He meets with Mr. Reed, the bank manager, and Mr. Barker's lawyer to act as a witness in court. They both reject his offer because they were already working for Mr. Barker's wife. Bernard, who seems extremely disappointed, begins to realize how tough and discriminatory life is for a black man. While looking around, Bernard discovers that there are four banks in one building and all of the doors are shut on the black man, not wanting to accept defeat because of his skin color. His business ideas spark to life again, and he feels compelled to buy the bank that had always shut him out. To achieve this goal, Bernard decides to meet with Mr. Joe, a character that his wife had introduced to him earlier in the movie. Joe is a black man who's full of wisdom and a rich real estate agent who takes life as it comes. He informs Joe of his new plan to buy the commercial bank. Mr. Joe, even with his years of business experience, has never heard of a goal as huge as his. He goes ahead to remind him that the land price is relatively high and that no black man has ever owned a building in Los Angeles. Bernard is not moved by a single point Mr. Joe list and insists on buying the bank building. Mr. Joe sees potential in him and decides to help him achieve his goal. However, for the idea to run smoothly, they need a white man who would top his game, play directly with the white people, and help his dream come true. Almighty Bernard already has Matt in mind, his cousin's friend who helped with his house renovation. After a series of discussions between the two partners, they agreed to train an experienced Matt to dress and act like a rich man, play golf, and teach him the basics of real estate and banking services. After a month of training and hard work, Matt proves to be a competent born genius, leading the two partners to believe that he was ready to top his game with the white bank owner, Renault Charles, to play golf, win his heart, and make his bank purchase intentions known. Matt finally meets with Charles at a golf club, where they instantly connect, and finally, Matt gets the chance to buy the bank building. Joe, on the other hand, acts as Matt's driver to oversee what he does. Matt needs to negotiate smartly with the bank owner but doesn't know how to go about it. Smart Bernard notices this and helps him learn the art of negotiation. He begins by calculating the building's vacancy rate and ends by calculating the building's revenue. Bernard calculates all the estimated numbers that might be involved in the negotiation and asks Matt to memorize them so he can win the deal. On the day of the negotiation, Matt portrays confidence and proves himself to be a step ahead of the bank owner and finally wins the deal at a low rate of $1.56 million instead of the initial $2.4 million deal. Finally, Bernard has a cause to celebrate his victory over being able to access the bank as a black man whenever he likes. Bernard now enters the bank with full confidence, and every white president from each bank in the building stands to give him a handshake. What a proud victory and shocking experience for those who didn't expect the real estate agent to make it this far, especially Mr. Reed and his secretary, who always denied him access to the bank. As a result of this daring achievement, many black people moved into the white neighborhood, which increased his real estate services. He was also recognized by the vice president, who met with him him and took a picture together. A few years later, Bernard takes his family to visit his father in Texas, who later tells him that he's proud of his accomplishments and helps him realize that everything is possible if you channel your mind towards greatness. The next day, Bernard takes his son on a walk and arrives at the former bank where he did his shoeshine business as a little boy. Surprisingly, Bernard is shocked to see a young boy at the front of the bank who offers to only shine shoes for white men. The experience touches him so much that he makes up his mind to help the black community in Texas by purchasing the mainland bank in Texas. On hearing this, Joe doesn't agree with the idea and tells Bernard that he thinks it's a bad one. Bernard, however, convinces Joe and helps him see reasons why he wants to purchase the mainland bank in Texas. As a good business partner, Joe agrees to the idea, and once again they start negotiating with the help of Matt. Matt meets with the owner of the bank and his son, who serves as his assistant. Later, after 
after a series of negotiations with the bank owner. The bank was finally sold to them. Bernard and his partners began loaning money to black people in order to help them achieve their dreams and make life easier for them in the white world. The bank owner's son, who wasn't okay with the whole development, was suspicious of the whole idea and follows Matt around to get valid evidence to bring them down. Matt notices the movement and informs Joe and Bernard about it. The bank owner's son later meets with the men in their house, confronts them on the loan they are giving out to black people, and threatens them with a letter from the U.S. Treasury Department, which will warrant the search in the next month. While all this was happening, a woman's role in the life of her man was not left out. Matt's wife convinces him to ask his boss to put him in charge of his own bank since he's much smarter and has three months' experience in the real estate and banking industries. Matt succumbs to his wife's advice and tables it before his bosses on the grounds that they can transfer the problem loans from Mainland Bank to the new bank, which he will leave, and thus be free of the U.S. Treasury Department for the time being. His bosses aren't much convinced as they believe he was not capable enough to head a bank. They eventually grant him his own Marlin Bank, but let Bernard's wife Eunice keep an eye on him as a cleaner in the bank. Matt went ahead to sign so many loan contracts and received news that some customers want to retrieve their money from his bank. That same day, a bank examiner arrives to take a record of all financial orders in the bank. Matt doesn't even understand what this means and fumbles at the interrogation process. Bernard decides to help Matt and dresses as a cleaner in his bank to get close and help with the process. However, all plans are truncated when the examiner gets suspicious and closes the door so nobody can hear their conversation. Later, the examiner notices some absurd loans Matt signed that went against bank guidelines. The matter soon escalates, causing distress among the business partners. Matt later confesses that he jumped protocol just to push his own bank and used a lawyer that the former bank owner's son recommended. They later realize, secretly, that it was the bank owner's son that was behind the confusion all along. A few days later, the business partners meet and suggest that the only way out of the mess was to leave Marlin Bank. Matt, determined not to let go of his first achievement, takes a decision without his boss's knowledge. His foolish decision gets Joe and Bernard arrested on the spot, gets him fired, and gets the mainland bank license revoked until further notice since it is insured under the US FDIC. The arrest almost cost Bernard his life after he demands to know what he did wrong from the white police. After some time, Matt meets with Senator McLean, who asks him to testify against his partners at the expense of his freedom as a white man. In regret, Matt makes a secret phone call and betrays his partners at the Senate hearing. Bernard also meets with Senator McLean, who asks him to either accept Matt's testimony at the court hearing or say whatever he wants and go straight to jail. Bernard, being a revolutionary businessman, decides to go to court, face the judge, and say the words that have been buried deep in his heart for a long time. This leads to Joe and Bernard's arrest and the decimation of their properties by the federal government. They are arrested for misapplying $189,000 in bank funds. The racial discrimination was so obvious that Matt was never charged with a single crime other than being fired. Few moments after the scene, Bernard and Joe get released after three years in prison, feeling even happier and better. Bernard hugs his wife and gets to witness her smile again. He reveals that he and his partner still have a property next to each other in the Bahamas, which the federal government is not aware of. Eunice, in utter shock, asks how they pulled this trick. Well, it turns out Matt wasn't a total jerk after all, as he helped keep the properties in check until after their release from prison. The Banker is an inspiring movie that speaks about racial discrimination, things we have to do to live a better life, challenges life throws at us, family love, trust in business, and the ability to always believe in yourself and make yourself proud. Thanks for watching. What do you think about this movie? Let us know in the comments below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, remember to subscribe to our channel for more black movie recaps like this.